Now, Delier Stevens is on the line with us here. It's a return visit. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me one more time. How are you doing? I'm doing smashing, thank you. Now, after releasing his first single, Sovereign D, in October last year, it's became one of the most played songs on Spotify in the Mozambique chart. And then he's released his second song, Closure, in February. And he's taken a six-month break from social media. And now he's reached the climax of his career by appearing on the Toby <laughs> Griffin Show for a second time. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about this break from social media, first of all. What prompted you to do that? Um, You know, my father is sort of that person that opened my eyes into this. Mm. And I realized that I was just working so much. Like, I used to spend so much time in the studio working, making music every single day. Like, I didn't actually spend time with my family and with my friends and all I was busy with was the number of likes that I got on this post, the mm. number of streams that I have. And I sort of just wanted to take some time to live my life. You don't ever want to wake up and look back and realize that you made no memories with your friends and the mm. people you love. All you did was work hard, hard, hard. I mean, yeah, work hard and hustle, hustle. But, you know, we don't live forever. You know, what yeah. if I'm to die tomorrow? Did I really enjoy my life? Did I really go out with friends? Did I enjoyed time with my family mm. so the concrete answer for that was i was living my life and i was enjoying and i was taking a break from all the attention and all the media just wanted to live yeah yeah is this social media abstinence still ongoing no um mm. recently i'm back um yeah. i announced you know a, a new project and I'm not going to lie to you, it definitely feels weird to, you know, have uh, to be back, you know, have everyone talking about Dillier again and mm. Dillier this, Dillier that. Yeah. It definitely feels weird because I was, you know, used to staying in my own zone, doing my mm. own thing. So now that I'm back, everyone is Dillier, Dillier. So it feels really weird. Yeah. But, you know, mm. now I'm back in social media again. I'll definitely be disappearing a little bit again after the mm. project is done. But for now, I'm here. Yeah. And before you started music, social media was kind of your thing, wasn't it? So did that yeah. feel weird to give up something that is and was quite a big part of your life? Well, um, taking breaks on social media is something I always did. Mm. Um, I always felt like it's, it's, it's really important to take breaks from social media. So, social media can be a really cool place, but if you exaggerate, it can also be a really dark and a hard place to be in and i feel like sometimes i just am so addicted to the number of likes and the number yeah. of um streams that i'm getting and i just need some time off i just need to take a break i just need to move away a little bit from the social media and the instagram and the tiktoks and everything i just need to live the real life yeah. in the real world so I'd say by now I'm used to taking a break from social media. It's easy. Mm -hmm. But when I first started, it was super hard to even take like a one week break. Yeah, It used to be super hard. But now, you know, whenever I want to take a break, I just delete Instagram off my phone mm -hmm. and it, it's cool. I don't mm -hmm. really care. <laughs> yeah, it is really hard, isn't it? Because even if you intend on taking a break, it's so easy yeah. out of habit just to check on social media, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. You understand exactly what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And what were you doing during that time when you weren't on social media? Were you making new music? Yes, uh, for sure. I was um, making new music. But, you know, I had to slow down a bit. I yeah. was not making a lot of music like I used to before because, you know, my intention of taking a break was actually you know, taking a break from making music and all these things. But mostly, mostly I was hanging out. I was spending time with my family. I just felt like I distanced with, from my friends so much during um, yeah. the making of this project. So I wanted to, you know, reemerge, reconnect with them again. And with my, 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 fam my family and my friends, you know, just talking to them again, mm -hmm. having conversations, spending time together, hanging out. You know, living the real world and not the social media world. Yeah. That's what I've been doing this past months. You know, going to the gym. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, just um, 
becoming a better version of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, this new project, you've been working on seven songs for it. What can we expect yeah. from the songs? Um, I can say it's um, you know, I'm terrified actually. I'm scared because it's a <laughs> yeah. it's a project of exploration. Mm. Like, um, I went really, really versatile with this project. It is something I'm actually quite scared about. Um, you know, when I released Sovereign D, um, people enjoyed it. People liked it. And when I released yeah. Closure, people also enjoyed it. It was closure was really different from Sovereign D. I did not release the same thing. Mm. And with this project, I feel like it's everything is so different from Sovereign D and Closure. Mm. Like everything sounds so different from what I've done before. Like yeah. I was going hip hop and I was going UK drill and I was spitting bars and I was rapping. I just hope people bear with me and people like it. Um I want to be a genre free artist. Like, I don't want to be an artist that people look at and say, oh, that is his only sound. I yeah. can define him by that sound. I want to be an artist that you can look at and say, damn, he can do anything. He can do this. He can do that. And I want to be an artist that is so versatile. And this is what I'm working on right now. So expect um, very different songs from what I've done before. The, yeah. the different lyrics. And in general, it's a very versatile project. Yeah. Do you worry about maybe some fans deserting you if you do genres that they don't expect you to do or do you not really care and like to do what you want to do i mean of course i care there's mm. no way you know um the same way i released my second song you know i gained a lot of fans with my first song right yeah and at the same time i lost a lot of fans from with my f first song and the same way i released my second song I gained a lot of fans for my second song mm. and I lost a lot of fans with my second song. <laughs> so I feel like it's it's a progression. You always lose fans and you always gain fans. You know, things happen. And, you know, I just hope people bear with me, honestly. As long as most of the fans like it, I'm happy. Because I know that it's impossible to have 100% of the people loving the project. Yeah. There's always going to be a percentage that is not quite happy with it. So... As long as most of the people like it, I'm good. But I really, really, really hope people like this because I worked so hard. Like, I invested so much time, so much money on yeah. this. And I just hope people love it. Seriously. Yeah. And what word would you use to describe the project? As in, is it an album or an EP or something else? Actually, that's a question everybody has been asking. <laughs> Well, um, I say it's not an album. Uh, mm. It's not an EP. I like to call it a pack of songs. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm not ready yet to say that I have my first EP and I have my first album. Yeah. I don't know. That just sounds too heavy for me. So I decided to make a pack of songs. These are songs that actually describe um, the moment of my life that I'm in right now. You know. When I release music, I'm describing the moment that I'm in. Hmm. So I'd just say it's a pack of songs, seven songs pack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it onto Spotify, would that class it as an album? Or are there ways you can yes. do it? Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. But <laughs> Spotify would classify it as an album. Actually, there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. So... I'm pretty sure if I gain new fans with um, Figure D out, my new project, they will think that this is an album. But for the people that are watching this right now or the people that know me before, they will know that it's not an album. Yeah. yeah. Is it a common thing for you to put the letter D in the title of your project? Um, I think so. Uh, I did that with Sovereign D and I'm doing yeah. that with Figure D out. Yeah. <laughs> um actually now that you're talking about it i didn't even notice that that's something i do occasionally <laughs> i'm just noticing now yeah. but i don't know i just yeah. find something cool about you know involving d in my titles now yeah. that i'm thinking about it it's something really cool that i like to do yeah <laughs> yeah it's a good idea to keep up i suppose because you know there's Artists like, I suppose, ed sheeran always uses mathematical symbols adele always mm -hmm. uses her age that she was a few years yeah. ago to make herself look mm -hmm. younger so you can do that 
with a D in all your titles. Yes. Everyone needs to have their own signature and their own thing. And I, I sort of want to be that artist that has their own thing, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what was the process when you were writing these songs and recording them? Um, Honestly, um, really, really hard for me um, mm. because, like I said, this is a very versatile project, which yeah. means I was not necessarily used to the type of genres that I was working on and writing on. Like, we're talking about trap, we're talking about UK drill, we're talking about hip-hop music, we're talking about songs that I've never made before. So it was really hard for me to do it, especially because I'm a pop person. Yeah. So I sort of wanted to mix my pop with hip-hop and with drill. And thank God it was successful at the end. I feel like right now you can't even process, how come you mixed pop with hip-hop and pop with drill, but yeah. everything will make more sense when it's finally out? And it worked, thank God. Um, it was a stressful process. Um, I lost my focus so many times. There were times when I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm done. I'm tired. This is exhausting. And um, I'm an artist that records harmonies, you know, vocal harmonies, which means different vocal sessions in the same part of the song. And mm. that is something really hard to perfect. Mm. So it was a stressful experience for me, not going to lie. But I'm so, 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 so happy with the results. I really can't wait. I'm so happy that people are excited about this project because I am so anxious, honestly. I'm not even excited. I'm scared. I'm anxious. Yeah. I wonder how people will react to this versatile project. Yeah, that's quite interesting doing harmonies because it seems to be that not everyone does it because, as you say, yeah. it's hard to do. Is that a natural talent that you have or is it taught? Yeah, I, I always liked doing harmonies for my music. Um, a lot of artists actually do harmonies for, for their music. It's just yeah. that if you're not a music person, you don't necessarily understand what is going on. You just listen yeah. to the song and you vibe. But most people do not understand the work that goes through making those songs. They just listen, they vibe, and say, yeah, this is the song of the year. I love yeah. it. But they don't understand the hard work that um, comes with you know, making that song and creating those harmonies. And I, I think my songs are pretty noticeable that they have harmonies. But, you know, if you're not a music person, I feel like you wouldn't understand and you wouldn't really try to understand what's actually going on in the music. You just vibe mm -hmm. But yeah, we work so hard for that. And harmonies are actually my favorite part of working on music every time. Yeah. yeah. It just makes a vocal fatter i suppose maybe that's not the best word but it gives it more texture and makes it more exciting yes. i think it, it it makes uh it look like a choir like there's yeah. a lot of people singing at the time and i think that's something really cool about music yeah absolutely and, and... especially because i grew up in church so you know there were people singing mm -hmm. in church like a choir and yeah. i always loved love love hearing that so i try to you know, create a choir myself and it sounds great. Oh yeah, absolutely. And what was your favorite song on the project overall, if you can pick? Um, what a hard question. <laughs> um, all, of, all of the songs are my favorites, I'd say, but there is something about, you know, people do not know the track titles yet. So I would say yeah. track one. <laughs> <laughs> track one is my favorite. Um, it's a trap pop song and actually I chose okay I chose this song as the title for the project Figure D Out <laughs> I just revealed the title yeah. but Figure D Out is actually a song and mm. this is why I chose it as the title because there's something so sweet about that song and mm. so honest the song mm. is talking about you know um, when somebody does something to you I think it's really important that you vocalize it and that you speak on it or else that anger will pant and, you know, you will explode at the wrong time. So in the song, I'm just basically saying that it's really important that you speak when yeah. somebody does something to you. And I think it's something really beautiful about that song, just the melody and um, the beat. And I just, and it's the song I worked hard for the most. So track one is my favorite song, Figure D Out. 
Yeah. Quite so. Yeah. And was there any particular method you used to sort of come up with the order of the tracks or did it not matter? Yes, it definitely matters. Um, I sort of went with like chapters of my life. Like I said, my yeah. music is based on things that happened to me and real things, real situations that actually happened to me. So I wanted to actually go in order. Like um, it started here and then it went there and then it went there. I feel like yeah. the entire project is like um, a story. It sounds like a story. If you pay attention to the lyrics, it sounds like a story that progresses until the end. So mm-hmm. yeah, definitely the, the the position of the tracks matter a lot. So I hope everyone listens exactly how it is in order. Do not skip any tracks. Just listen to everything as it is for the full experience. Yes. Well, what else is coming up for you? Do you have more projects on the way? Um, I'd say this this rollout is actually really quick but hot, but there's mm. a lot coming um on my fans way like it's a great time to be a dealer fan right now like i have so many surprises like people think the seven songs are it and i'm done but truth is i have so many other songs coming your way like i have so many you know i had six months to work on so many different things and i'm really excited to be sharing this soon with you all Yeah, absolutely. Well, many thanks for coming on today and we'll see you in next year, maybe. (laughs) Oh, or maybe this year. You never know. Never know. (laughs) Perfect. Never know. Thank you so much.